Section 11.2, confidence intervals. Once again, uh, any confidence interval that you can construct in this setting will take one of three shapes. The confidence interval will be a positive and a positive, a negative and a negative, or a negative and a positive. And in the next column, what the confidence interval says about the mean of the differences. All right, so when we do a confidence interval in this section, remember confidence intervals are used to estimate a population parameter. And so what we'll be estimating here is the mean of the differences. I should say four, four estimating means of mean. And then over here, if the null hypothesis is mu sub d equals zero and the alternative is mu sub d you know not equal to or less than or greater than zero then this column will say that the confidence interval shows support for and then we'll specify the the hypothesis that the confidence interval shows support for Okay, since we're um, estimating the mean of the differences, if the mean of the differences has a confidence interval or is estimated with the confidence interval that looks like this, it might be you know, 0.7 up to 3.5, doesn't matter what these numbers are as long as they're positive, then this is saying that the mean of the differences is greater than zero, and that means positive. And if there's, if the confidence interval claims that gives evidence that the mean of the differences is positive because of the two positive numbers, that would be support for oops, H1, the alternative. If you happen to find an interval that's negative negative, the second case, you know, negative point eight to negative 0.1, something like that. Doesn't matter the size of those numbers, just that they're both negative. Then that gives evidence to support that the mean of the differences is less than zero, and that means negative. Well, mu sub d is less, less than zero. The only place that's gonna appear is also in the alternative hypothesis. So, <clears throat> A confidence interval that's negative negative will give us support for H1. And finally, the third case, if the lower limit is negative, like negative 0.97, and the upper limit is positive, like 2.7, negative zero is in there somewhere in that interval. Since zero is in there, we're going to say that the mean of the differences could plausibly be zero because zero's in that interval. Zero's not in this interval, and zero's not in this interval. It's only in this one where you have a negative number to the left and a positive number to the right. And that is going to give us evidence to support the null hypothesis. So this is kind of a similar grid that I, grew, that I, that I gave you for the difference of two proportions. And that's because we were looking at the difference and we compared it to zero. And we're comparing this one to zero. So similar, let's take a look at an example. Let's see. Number 13 on that sheet. 
notice it says to construct a 95% confidence interval. I play softball down at the, um, in the rec league in, in Midland here. And every year we have to take our bats to be tested. And they use some kind of process like this. And they, here they have, you know, they have nine different specimens. If you want to think about this, it could be nine different bats. And they, they measured the, the um, hardness of the bat. I mean, if the, if, the, if the bat is made with a certain material that makes it a little bit harder, it might hit the ball harder. But you have some of these bats that are so hard that when they come off the bat, the third baseman and the shortstop, they don't even have a pitcher. They don't even have time to you know, react. And so they don't want these very, very uh, expensive hard bats out there like platinum or whatever it is. And, and so they test them every year. And if the bats are too, are gonna make the ball fly off the bat too hard, then they're going to uh, eliminate that bat from use. They don't have professionals out in the rec league. Okay, and people can get hurt, so they want to make it safe. There's a, a diamond indenter, which if you squeeze this device around the bat, it gives you this measure. And then you also have this steel ball um, device that measures the hardness. But here's bat one, just two different devices. So if a bat was hard, it would be hard for either of these testers. But these two numbers are related because they're measuring the same bat or the same product, whatever it is that you're talking about up here. All right, so as before, we're going to put L1 is the steel ball measures, and L2 is the diamond measures for the same bats, and then we're going to have the differences here. So let's enter in our calculator, the steel ball measures, the diamond measures, and then let's subtract L2 minus L1 to get the differences as we did before. Stat, edit, you shouldn't take too much time. Clear out your lists and enter in L1. So 50, 57, 61, 71, all of the problems from this section, you're gonna be entering data in this, but usually the sample sizes are you know, fairly small, so it's not gonna take you a whole lot of time. Take a peek and just make sure all of these data points are uh, matched together. Pretty good. And I'm gonna go make an error. I'm gonna leave my cursor right there, as many of you will. And I'm going to type in second two minus second one, L2 minus L1. Same thing I did before. The difference is that my cursor is in this spot right here. And this is what ha happens if you do this. Okay, data type. It's expecting a number down in that position. You're trying to put a formula. So let's go back, come up here, oops. Clear that out and then go up here. And if you highlight L3 and do the same thing, L2 minus L1, then it calculates all the differences. All right, now you can do these if you want uh, individually. It's not going to take long, especially if you have nice whole numbers like this. You know, 52 minus 50 is 2, 56 minus 57 is negative 1, 61 minus 61 is 0, and so on. And you can go right through and get all of these just kind of in your head. But for messier numbers, the calculator works. And you're gonna to have to enter these into L3 anyway. Okay, so what we want here is T interval. That's how we calculate a confidence interval for a single set of data. All right, so stat, 
and we're going to go to tests instead of t-test, which is normally what we would do in the hypothesis testing situation, we're going to have a confidence interval piece in here as well. So we want to go down to t-interval. We're going to select data again. L3 is our list again, frequency one, and we still want the same sea level. So it turns out I didn't change anything here. And we're going to calculate. OK, so I'm going to write this down. Go ahead. Question? My frequency level is to, it's a Y. Was it a Y? Yeah, it won't let me type like the number one. Oh, OK, let me show you what you did here, um, Amani. All right, so when you go to tests, um, and we want T interval. All right, so <clears throat> usually when you give a frequency, you're going to give a frequency list. If you notice this, a, this um, cursor here, it has an A in it. So it's set for the alphanumeric. So if you hit the number one here, it would actually give you the letter that corresponds to number one. Why? Oh. You don't want that. So since the alpha cursor is on, hit the alpha key to turn it off. Now it's the regular cursor. Now you can hit the number one and get the one you want. Okay, I got it, thanks. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, the input is going to be data instead of stats. And the list is L3. And the frequency is one, and the sea level is 0.95. And with all of this, it gives us, as the very first thing, our confidence interval. But what we need to know is that both of those numbers are positive, and that's how we're going to interpret the confidence interval. All you have to know. But it also gives us, you see that there? It gives us the mean of the differences, 1.333, that's D bar. And S sub D, 10 is nine of course, S sub D they gave us to be 1.5. All right, so here's our confidence interval. It says construct the confidence interval to judge whether the two indenters result in different measurements. And since we have both positives here, I'm gonna bring this down again. And since both are positive, what there is is there's evidence to support that the mean of the difference is a positive. That means one of those is, is larger than the other, gives a higher measure than the other. And that gives support for the alternative. Um, all right, so <clears throat> this means we have evidence that the mean of the difference is greater than zero. Oops. Gives us this. So this gives us support for the alternative. There's no, there's no support, no support that the mean of the differences is equal to zero. That was our, would be our, our, our null hypothesis. So there must be evidence to support the other one, that there is a difference. And this, not only do we know that there's a difference, we know that the one gives us a positive reading. Um, the diamond gives us a, a, a larger number than the steel ball indenter for these different items that we're measuring. So we are 95% confident that the two indenters on average yield different 
measurements.